Welcome to the Lady Landlords Podcast, where we empower women to gain financial independence through real estate investing. I'm your host, Becky Nova, founder of Lady Landlords. If you're ready to buy, manage, and grow your real estate portfolio, then let's get started. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Lady Landlords Podcast. This week, we are bringing you a member spotlight on a new lady landlord that just got her keys. So, Hashi, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Good. I would love if we could just start by you just sharing a little bit about who you, Hashi, the woman is first. Sure. All right. So my name is Hashi Richards. I am a resident of Florida. I'm also a mom of a wonderful, amazing 10-year-old son. I'm also a wife to an awesome husband. And I've lived in Florida since, I'm going to age myself here, since 1997. And during the day, I am a lawyer. I'm an attorney. I have my own law firm and I do estate planning and also some immigration as well. And in my free time, oh, and I just ran a marathon. I just ran the Chicago Marathon. <laughs> sure, tell me then in your free time. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what you do, mom, wife, um, marathon runner. That was amazing. Yeah, I ran that, the Chicago Marathon in October. And then in my other free time, I like to cook uh, vegan food because oh. I'm a vegan, so. Gotcha. You got a lot going on. And then with all of that, you still decided, hey, real estate investing is something else I want to tip my toe into. Yeah, why not add something else to my plate, right? <laughs> right? What what kind of drew you over to real estate investing? So, you know, my parents were investors. So over the years, they accumulated many properties. And I thought, you know, then they were always rented out. They had good renters. And I saw um, it looked easy <laughs> since I wasn't directly <laughs> involved in it. Um, and that was a way for them to sort of build their wealth and, you know, um, enjoy the process, it seemed like. So I thought, oh, I'm going to do that too. And so I actually um, started last year. Started last year. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, when, when you decided to kind of get started in that, what was the first step you took? Well, so just to start, I have a place in Miami It's a uh, that I lived in, and so I had renters in there. So I don't really consider that an investment property just because it didn't start off that way, right? It wasn't for the purpose of investing. Um, but it what became really became the investment. Right. It became an investment by, by default when I moved uh, to where I'm living now. But mm -hmm. what really... So I kind of did things backwards, I guess. First, I said, you know what? We need to get started on this because as our son is getting older, one of my goals was to... Um, pass on some generational wealth to him. So I said, let's just form an LLC. So that's the first thing I did. Okay. And I did that uh, in October of 2021. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So we knew now we had legal structure, which also as you being an attorney makes perfect sense. Um, and that was kind of where you started. How did you then decide like what you wanted to do next? So after I did that, I said, okay, now I'm going to start looking. And I was just looking in the general area here in, in uh, Central Florida. And, but at that time, you may remember, and in early 2022, this year, mm -hmm. the, the prices were just out of control, particularly here in Florida, right? And so I'm like, oh my gosh, everything is too much, more than I want to spend. And also, am I going, going to be able to get the, the rent to be able to cover the expenses. And wow. so I sort of would look sporadically and then give up and <laughs> then never really move forward with any of those um, searches or anything like that. Right. And then when did you become a realtor as well or get your license? So I've, I've had my license since 2008, but since I'm also a lawyer, there was a, a job that I had. I was working for a firm and they said um, I'd had to deactivate it at the time for the position that I was in. So it was right. inactive for a while and then I restarted it again. But mostly I was using it just for um, referrals. So people would buy down here or sell down here and then I would get um, a little commission that way. Right. So, but it's nice to it's nice to have just to be able to search and look for properties and things like that. So I was say as somebody that absolutely finds like the best part probably the process of just like looking through properties, 
Um, that's fantastic that you had that ability to search the MLS as a realtor for your own deals. Do you feel that there was any other benefit to you being a realtor, making the transition to being an investor? Well, besides be having access to the properties, being able to, you know, run my own CMAs and also, I'll, and we'll get to that later, being able to select the property management company as well. We will get to property management yes. in a few minutes. So, okay. So you were kind of looking through these properties. It sounds like then you were almost kind of like stuck in a way saying that, you know, the properties that you were finding were just the prices were too high, you know, and that you weren't really finding like something that was going to be a good deal down in Florida. What did you do to kind of get past that? Um, so then I started looking outside of Florida, right? Like looking, broadening my search in other states and then looking for information on the internet. And that, I think that's how I found you. And yeah. the podcast. Um, but then I never pursued those either because, um, and I know there's long distance investing, but for me, I just wasn't comfortable with that at the, at the time. Right. So uh, after I started listening to you and finding other information on the internet, um, I said, I, I need to do this before the time keeps passing. Right. And there's, right. I know that people try to time the market, but I don't believe in that. So I just needed to go. And then that's what happened. I said, I'm going to do it. Good. So what did you do? So I scheduled a call with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. We did, um, we did the roadmap workshop together. Yeah. Right? That was in June or July, I believe of this year. Yeah. I think that, I think it was right around 4th of July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hadn't made any offers on anything. You and I had our call mm -hmm. and that was sort of the you know how sometimes people tell you things, but then you need to hear it from a complete stranger <laughs> like you <laughs> and sort of outline like a little push, like say, you know what, Hashi, you have the resources, you have the wherewithal, you have the intelligence, you have the MLS, you have everything you need. You have like all the tools, plus maybe even more. This is how you're going to do it and sort of validate what I was already thinking, because if you're if you're sort of in your thoughts by yourself or you're bouncing it off just one or two people, that it may not be the impetus you need to go forward. Right. And then also, and not saying this was specifically your situation, but a lot of our members, it's the same thing. They have that knowledge. They maybe don't have anybody else in their life that understands kind of real estate investing or somebody else that's also built a portfolio. Like I'll be the first to say, and I'm, I'm sorry I have to use her, but like, you know, I bounce ideas off my mom all the time, but like, my mom doesn't invest, you know, she, she thinks what I, what I do is crazy. You know, she thinks that this is absolutely absurd to be able to go and buy a property or rehab it or, or do any, or deal with tenants or any of that type of thing. So sometimes like it is hard if we don't have the right support in our circle, when we really should be asking somebody that's kind of been there, done that and has been successful. Exactly. So, and sometimes the people you talk to, and again, I'm not naming any specific people or my particular circumstance, but sometimes right. a lot of people come from a place of fear. Oh, right. why are you going to do that? Or ignorance, or maybe they don't know. And they say, oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, or that sounds scary. And what if you don't have a renter and this and that? And that could kind of discourage you if you listen to those voices, right? Right. And most people, most people, I think we can generalize here, follow the nine to five mentality the safety in a box, humans themselves, we, we like security. We don't like change. We don't like trying things different. Those like yourself, those that are listening to this podcast, we have that entrepreneurial kind of mindset, but most people do not have that. Most people like to be secure, knowing they get that paycheck at the end of the week, knowing that they're gonna be able to pay their bills and are gonna stay there until they retire. And that's just unfortunately a reality. And then, so when all of a sudden now you have somebody like the two of us that are saying, we want to do something a little bit outside of the box, it's hard for us to then communicate with those that are really in that nine to five world that are scared to get out of their own way, get out of their shell and try something different, like real estate investing. Exactly. Exactly. But I say, why not have both? I mean, I've already broken yes. so many stereotypes of what people may expect of me, you know, going to law school, coming, you know, being an immigrant, all the things, opening my own business. So why not again, add something um, else to that? So. Right. Well, I'm glad that the call sounded like it really kind of confirmed the direction that you should be going and made sure that we were going down that right path. So. Good. Right. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, the call was solidified everything for me. And then after the call, you provided me with some documents, right? The actual right. roadmap, uh, which was really nice because I remember you saying in the call, because I'm a big note taker. And you right. said, don't worry about taking the notes. I just want us to have a conversation. I'll take the notes, Hashi. I'm going to memorialize everything and I'm going to send it to you. So that was, that freed me up from trying to memorize it or write down things that we were talking about. And also it um, changed my idea of what I wanted to invest in because first I was looking for um, condos, which is, you know, really popular around here, but they have the maintenance fee and all those extra things. So what you, what we talked about sort of shifted what I was looking for in a property. Good. So then after that call, what happened? So after that call, I believe that was in July, you sent me the roadmap and then I really honed in. And I don't know if you want me to discuss the particulars of that property that you, we talked about, but it was, um, a three, you said to look for like a three, two, mm -hmm. right. With no HOA, which is really hard to find down here in Florida. Yeah. A lot of, most neighborhoods have HOAs that are in that right. C or above neighborhood class. Right. Right. Um, and then, so I really started looking for that. I started putting that search into MLS and the, again, I found a few properties in Orlando and I actually put an offer in on one first. Okay. 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 And that was in August and I was super excited about it. I put in the offer, um, had already contacted a lender and everything was moving forward. I put in the offer, had the proof of funds letter mm -hmm. and, and then they emailed back almost immediately and said, they're getting multiple offers for way above the asking price, which was down here. It was down here. It sounds, sounds very 2022. Sounds mm -hmm. like. <laughs> right. So I was like, okay, well then that was that, you know, that was gone. That offer was gone. That offer was off the table. Right. Um, and so I started looking uh, again outside a little bit and I found this area about an hour and a half from Orlando. Okay. So when you got that, message saying like, Hey, there's a ton of other offers, ton way over yours. How did you feel? Um, I, I was discouraged. And I said, well, I probably shouldn't have never done that in the first place, but I looked at, it was listed for a while. No, you know, so I thought, well, maybe right. they may accept an offer, um, at asking price, right? right? Because it was listed for longer than like a week or two, which, you know, down here at that time, um, seemed like a long time. And right. So when she responded back, I said, okay, I'm just going to, I'm discouraged, but I'm going to, I'm not stopping. Right. It didn't stop me. So um, then I found this other area, like I said, about an hour and a half north of here. I love that, that fine, that was discouraging, that's annoying, that's frustrating when a, when a property doesn't make a fit. But I will say what I'm proud of you for doing is one, not chasing that deal and then being like, oh, okay, okay, I'll give, I'll pay an extra hundred grand, right? And then now all of a sudden your numbers don't work. So I'm happy that you just kind of said like, hey, this just isn't kind of meant to be. And then it's, you also went out and found another area that would work. Right. I'm, I, I, and again, I think I'm of the mindset now that if something doesn't happen the way I want it to, it's not supposed to happen, like you said. And also maybe right. it wasn't the right property and I'm not getting emotionally attached to this property. It is, right. it was a beautiful property and always my intention, you know, with, with real estate investing and going forward is not just for me to build wealth for my family, but I want a beautiful place for people to live in, right? I want tenants right. to be happy and be proud of the place they're living in. And that was that house, but I know I was going to find another one just like that. So I kept it moving. Great. And I love what you said that we cannot get emotionally attached, especially yeah. when we're buying investment properties. I totally get if you're there buying your forever home, your dream home, where you're going to raise your family and where you're going to live. That's the people that get emotionally attached. Those are the people that are going to say, great, I will pay extra because they just want it because it's for them. We are investors. We, we can like properties. Absolutely. But really the big difference comes down to, am I making money off of this? Is this a good deal? Is this a good purchase for my portfolio? And that's really kind of it. Exactly. So I'm glad yeah. you were able to remove that. So, okay. So now we found a different neighborhood, right? Found a different neighborhood. And so I hopped in my car and drove up to this neighborhood and I had, I think seven or eight homes on my list to look at that day. Okay. So I was driving around, looking at them, going from house to house. 
and I saw this this house. They're all sort of similar. It's new construction in this area, which is a really good sign, and wow. that and it's a booming. Um, and I pull up to this house and it's a corner house. And I thought, you know what? I think a corner house may be nice because it's, I feel like it's more valuable. I don't know if that's necessarily true. There was no neighbors on both sides. So it's only one neighbor on one side. And there was uh, a couple houses occupied on that street. So I go in and I said, this is a beautiful, beautifully laid out home. It was a three, two, uh, met the requirements on the roadmap, no HOA. And it was um, under the my price point. Under your price point. Under my price point. Interesting. And actually, yes. And actually, what happened was about a week before I went. So I made the appointment uh, a week out, right? So when I looked on MLS, it was priced more, about I think fifteen thousand dollars more. Okay. And then when I went to see it the day before I was supposed to see it. They dropped the price. Interesting. Do you know why? Was it just because it was sitting for a while or? You know, I don't know if it was an incentive for people to to purchase that yeah. home, but that particular developer dropped a few of the houses all at the same time. But the house value is still worth more than what they what they listed it at, what they changed the listing price to, which is was a really good sign for me. Okay. So now, so you had the house that had a lower price, had a sale price that sounded like then it was reasonable, but what right. your budget was. Yes. Lower than, and then also lower than what it would actually um, appraise for. Right. Which means that you had built in equity. Right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Gotcha. So, and did the, so was, was it then a new house? So it was vacant? It was, yes. So I forgot to mention it's new construction. So no one had ever lived in it before. And now a couple of the other properties I looked at were also new construction. And it's so funny because on MLS, sometimes it's not updated. And so one of the addresses I went to, it was just a shell of a house. (laughs) It wasn't, I pulled up the framing. Yeah. And like a door. I'm like, "Hmm, I don't think I want to get hurt walking up into this property. So I don't even go any further, but this house was all done. It actually had all the appliances and everything in there. So it was just like move in ready, which is what I wanted because with my busy schedule and things like that, there's no way that I have time to do a rehab or go up there even to, to fix things or just anything like that. So I wanted it just completely ready for me to just buy and rent. Right. Which is exactly what you found. Yeah. Now was, we have to get it. Perfect. Yeah. Now we're working on the renting part, right? Not, right. So I so I ended up so you're gonna get to the purchase. So what happened? I want to tell you something funny though. After I put in the offer, guess who called me? The realtor of the house number one. You're kidding. The <laughs> one know. with all the offers? Yeah, the one the one that had all these above market offers called me and said, Hey, are you still interested in X, Y, and Z? Mm. And um And I said, well, no, because I'm already moving forward with this other place. But I guess that fell through. And I actually need to check MLS to see whatever happened to that that home. But I thought that was kind of uh, interesting. So, Was there any part of you that wanted to go back and purchase the original property? No, because I'd already, you know, saw this one and it was, it worked out. The numbers worked out better for this one. And also, um... It wasn't right at the time, so I don't know what change, and I'm not privy to that. So I said, "Nope, I'm just going to go forward with what I had have, have already started." So, what I love that you just said there is that the numbers worked better on this other property. Yeah, right. So here, you know, once again, not in your situation, but other people could be sitting there, kind of pining away, being like, "Oh man, I really wanted that property. I really want that property," and get so discouraged that they never make another offer. And so right. you actually ended up finding another property that was a better deal. Right. And also, you know, Becky, even though the first property was beautiful and everything, it wasn't, an, it wasn't new construction. Um, right. it, was, it was older than this one. And by older, I mean, it's not some 1940 home, but it was older. Um, and it may have needed a little bit of work. So I was willing to take all that into consideration just because it was closer. And also I could probably get a higher rent for it, just being more closer to Orlando, right? That area versus being a little farther out, but it was also right. priced more. So that sort of fit in with that right so but this other place is priced less it's going to be less rent but less work to um to rent out right fantastic so then you had you kind of alluded earlier that you decided to go with the property manager can you kind of walk us through like what went through that decision 
Yes. So, uh, by the way, I closed a little while ago and I said, okay, I need to get this rented because my first payment is due in January. <laughs> so <laughs> um, that's one of the advantages of having the MLS access was I was able to go on there and see some of the properties that are rented around there. And, and when I saw, I saw the same property management company name pull up and I interviewed yeah. a couple of them and I really loved this one. Right. They are I'm basically hands off. Um, they're very upfront with their fees, which is, you know, a percentage of the rent and mm -hmm. they take care of virtually everything. And I like the way they are so uh, communicative with me. They've been sending right. me emails and they send a weekly report and all these things. And so they're very transparent and I really don't have to worry about anything at this point, except just uh, collecting the, the, actually they collect the rent check for me and then they take their percentage and then deposit the rest into our account. So Right. And then you just get that money in your bank account. That's it. <laughs> For any of other members that are looking to use a property manager, we actually do have a podcast episode all about how to identify the right property manager for you and the questions you should be asking. So do make sure to go back and take a listen to that episode if you're considering using a property manager. But Ashi, that's great. Like you, once again, you have other things in your life that keep you very, very busy. Yes. So that's fantastic that you then decided that this was the best strategy for you was to have that help. Yeah, and Becky, I'm, even if you don't have access to MLS, I would tell everyone to interview, right? Because when I called one company, they called me back and didn't know how to pronounce the town name, didn't know anything about oh. the town or, oh, well, then they were like, well, I think I can go up there. Yeah, sure. And it didn't, we're very uncertain about this whole thing. And I said, nope. I want someone right. that's been there that knows the town that in this particular town is a smaller town. So they were this, the one that I ended up going with told me, you know what, um, to find a handyman is difficult, but we have those lined up because it's not so close to me. You know, it's about a 15, 20 minute drive from these other major cities. So right. they were very forthcoming with the rental market and finding maintenance help and all those things, which I really like, and also showed me that they are familiar with that market. Plus, I was able to see that they're renting other homes on that same street. Right. Why would you not? And I, I think this is also a strategy for like realtors as well, right? Like if, if I'm looking to sell my home and the two houses on either side of me are already sold and sold, you know, in a great fashion by the same person, that's probably who I'm going to want to call, right? They probably really understand the market. Exactly. So same thing. If everybody else is really using that same property manager, that's a great place to at least start. We still have to do our own due diligence. We still have to make sure that that we like them. Um, there was actually a property that I'm looking at that same thing asked to the neighborhood who other people were using as a property manager. And everybody said they were like, we hate the guy, but he's the guy. He's yeah. the one. He does a fantastic job. He runs the business really well. So it was just really nice to always be able to kind of get opinions um, to be able then to make like my own decision on that. So it's a great starting point. So I'm glad you started there. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing I liked about, it, of course, being a lawyer, I'm always reading the contracts and it's a month to month contract. So in month right. six, if I'm irritated or I don't like what's going on, you can just pull out and the renters will still stay. Right. Um, and so I like that part about it. I'm not stuck for a year if I don't like it or whatever happens, I'm able to get out. So, right. No, I so that's a really nice bonus. I've seen other people that end up being stuck with the property manager and they just can't get out or there's so many fees or whatever cost it is for them to be able to make a change that sometimes they almost stay with that horrible property manager just because of the cost of it. So mm -hmm. no, they're, they're afraid. Right. Exactly. Good. I like that. So what's, so now we got that property. Now we're getting it rented. Okay. What's next for you, Hashi? Well, let me pull out my little roadmap here. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, now I, you know, I want to buy another one within well, let's see, it's December. By July, I'd like to have another one. Wow. And um, so hopefully I can either, you know, I have, you know, I have my emergency savings and things like that, that I don't necessarily want to dip into, but maybe leverage this property somehow in the next six months or so, now that it has some built in equity, plus what I put down to be able to buy property number two. And I may even buy in that same area, because like I said, it is a booming Right. Yeah. Well, and that's also important too. When you already found kind of a property that like works, that is cash flowing in that neighborhood, you have the right property manager. It kind of makes sense if you can to continue to purchase in that same neighborhood. You already have an established team. 
right? You already know the market. You already have the property manager. You already know what the rental market le is like in that area. You found new construction, which is important to you. And I know it's big in Florida, you know, yeah. so then why kind of be like, oh, let me just start over from scratch. Let me okay. go look in a completely different place. Like you might as well first start in the area that you already kind of know. Right. Why fix? You don't need to fix anything if it's not broken, right? If that's what? working for me, then okay. And like I said, that area, there's other streets that they're building on. And I already have my property management company. I already uh, know how to negotiate with that um, particular seller if they're still selling um, those homes and keep it moving. My goal is to buy, if I can, one every six months or so to sort of build this portfolio. And then, you know, uh, long term is to involve my son in the process. I think I mentioned that wasn't really hands on when my parents were doing it, but I would like him to learn right. this. That way, he's not just given keys when he's when we're gone. Like, oh, here are your ten properties or whatever it may be, but rather he has learned how to manage uh, the business side of it. Right, and then they always kind of say too, like, you know, he's going to have a different appreciation if he saw mom out there looking at properties, um, going to showings, driving through neighborhoods, rather than just being like, you're right, rather than just being like, hey, here, by the way, is, is some keys that are just left to you. And also it's gonna enable him to continue that portfolio rather than making bad business decisions, you know, down the line, which clearly nobody wants for the kid. So mm -hmm. um, right. And like teaching him, like, okay, so property A is, you know, the mortgage is fifteen hundred, honey. And now mommy's getting seventeen hundred. So what's seventeen hundred minus fifteen hundred? Well, what do you do with that two hundred? Do you put it in our bank account? What do you, can we spend it? You know, all those things that that yeah. will make him financially savvy and right. just keep building that and it's just, it makes me happy. It makes me happy twofold. One, that he'll be learning and that now whoever these tenants are going to be, they're moving into a beautiful home and it's going to be managed properly. And, and again, you know, that's really the point of all this. Yes, it's to make money and to build my wealth, but also to be proud to have people living in in your property, particularly here in Florida. You know, there's a lot of, and I'm sure up there in New York, like, slum landlords and things like that that don't care that just want to collect the money and I never would want to be associated with anything like that so right and, and completely agree really what we're trying to do at Lady Landlords is to be able to help provide clean stable safe housing for others right and then yes that is a business business needs to be profitable but you can absolutely do that by still putting out great properties and really giving people homes that's yeah. how I kind of like to look at it, right? It's not just a house. It could be, it's my house. I might right. own the walls, but it's really our tenant's home and we need to treat it as such. Exactly. That's so yeah. true, Becky. And that's my intention, so. Good. I'm, well, that's that's why you're doing so successful. When you really lead with that right mentality, I think the universe just kind of presents the right opportunities for you. Yeah. So so now, listen, your wife, your mom, um, and I know, I know your son's got a lot going on too. I remember from our call that keeps you very busy as well. You're an attorney, you have your own practice. You also have your real estate license. Like how, when do you sleep? How do you, how do you balance all of that to then be like, great, let me go drive an hour and a half away to go look at a property. <laughs> Well, that was on a Saturday morning. I remember my son, you know, he he's a competitive athlete. So he has a million tournaments and all these things going on. Honestly, I I really have been practicing uh, mindfulness. Okay. And it has helped so much. Like right now, I have a thousand things to do, right? But right now I turned off everything. I have my cup of tea here and I'm focusing only on the call between you and I. And I'll deal with all that later. So it's what are you working on at that moment? focus and hone in on that and then worry about everything else as it comes. But if I literally sat here now and started thinking about the 10 other things that I have to do within the hour, I wouldn't be able to focus and it would, that anxiety may start to build up. So it's really practicing mindfulness and people say, well, what, you know, I can't, I can never do that. Hashi. I don't even know what that means. Well, that means right now, if you're starting to feel anxious, taking three full deep breaths and centering and then right. looking around and finding five things around the room that you can ground yourself with before you let your thoughts just take take away, you know. 
Um, and as far as sleeping, I'll give you guys a little tip. I've been taking um, magnesium at night, which really helps me just sleep. It's a, it's powder. It's not medication, you know, not, nothing against medication, but it's powder. You just put in some hot water and drink and it really calms your nerves at night to be able to have a nice sleep. So huh. that also just kind of sounds how you're talking about, like using your tea now, like during this time, like also like, you know, they say same kind of thing, like have like a chamomile, like kind of like tea, like in like the evening or whatnot. But it sounds like that's what you're doing with the magnesium, like right that mm -hmm. hot cup of water to just really kind of like calm in the, in the evening. Absolutely. And also, by the way, when I even when I didn't have the magnesium, just drinking tea at night, it takes right. a long time to drink because it's hot. And so you're taking time drinking it. You're also mindfully drinking it. And while you're right. drinking, it, you don't feel like eating anything. I used to be like a late night snack eater. And now I can't do that because I have the, the magnesium water to drink. So right. there's no room to eat. <laughs> I like, okay, so this is also a diet plan in right. addition. So, love it. But I, I love what you're also saying about just like kind of focusing on like one thing at a time. And listen, I'll be the first to say that is so much easier said than it actually is done. It does take practice. Mindfulness absolutely does take practice. But, you know, they do say that like when we try to multitask, we kind of accomplish less things because our mind is changing between like, wait, I got to send that email. No, wait, wait, a different email. No, let me make that phone call. No, let me do the, turn the laundry machine on. You know, we have, we separate. And then all of a sudden we kind of don't, we're not effective and we don't get as many things accomplished when we're trying to do all the things at once. It really is that idea of like, I am here. We are now hosting a podcast and then we will be able to, then this is complete. I can check this box. And everybody loves checking a box. I don't know if you're like a list maker. There's nothing better than putting a check or crossing out that thing on your to-do list and then saying, okay, great. Like, what is the next thing that I need to tackle in a day? Um, and I agree that really is great for anxiety, for stress, um, and to really say, to really be the best you can be in every situation. Right. I mean, exactly. I mean, you said it so beautifully. It's like, you know, right now, if I was doing other things or checking my phone, I'm not giving 100% to Becky on this call or to your viewers right. that may be listening or watching. And they're, I'm not putting my best foot forward and giving them all the information that I know. Same when I'm working on an estate plan with a client, you know, it has to be completely focused on them because I'm not doing my 100% at that point. So, right. I love that. With, we have so many moms, especially in the group, and just other women that have multiple priorities with different jobs and activities and all that. So I'm, I, that's going to be incredibly helpful for them to be able to hear just some tips that we all need to be kind of just working on and putting into practice. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And by, you know, it, and we're not perfect, right? I mean, so we try our best every day. We wake up every day. I always tell my son, wake up every morning, thank God for your feet touching the ground and do your best that day. And if it's right. leaving, you know, laundry half done, then that's what it is. That's what you're able to do that day. I mean, we, we're not robots, right? So as long that's as- not the way that life should be lived. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. We're going to have to have you back on in a few months when you get that next property. No you're pressure, gonna right? And, you're going to have to come back and share how we kind of did that and, and what we're kind of growing into as this portfolio of yours grows down in Florida. I would love to, Becky. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for, you know, giving me that push with that call and, and the beautiful roadmap that you gave. I mean, I referenced it. I looked at it again to try to get that second property, hopefully in the next six months, but it was really helpful to me. And I really appreciate the uh, the podcast because that really was what I heard first before I knew about your roadmap and everything. And I think it's very valuable to, to, to seasoned investors and also new investors as well. Right. Thank you. You know, for me, it's, this is such a labor of love. Like it really is. When I was starting and growing my portfolio, there were just things that were just gaps for me. Um, and I was, I was always asking like, well, how can I do that? Or how are other people doing that? Or, or how can I kind of solve through that problem? And how can I have a plan of, of not just what I need to be buying today, but what I need to be buying in five years. So really for me, I try to think about like, what would have been helpful for me and my goal has always just been to make one other woman's journey easier than mine was. Yeah. So I am so that. happy. I am so happy that I can now check that box now that I have <laughs> Hashi that was able, that was, that's amazing. I'm, I'm so proud of you. And also I want to say to you, the reason for your success is because you put the work in. Yeah. Right. You went out there, you took that roadmap and you took action. You put that into play. You did the work. You didn't just then sit back and be like, great. 
I have a piece of paper that tells me what I should do. I'll just wait for the universe to give it to me. You went out and made things happen. Right. And that really is the difference between the wannabe investor and the successful investor. But you did right. that work. Yeah, it's like, it's called analysis paralysis where you just read. And I was doing that for a while. So don't get me wrong. It was right. like reading a million articles and then um, then I did it. And by the way, ladies, whoever is listening, there's going to be little bumps along the way. I had certainly had my share, but it's um, how do you get over that, right? Not just stopping and saying, or getting upset or anything like that. Just figure out a way if you can to get over it and get on the other side. Because now that I'm here, I'm, I know what to expect and it's not going to be a smooth ride for property number two or three or whatever it may be. And now I know what to anticipate possibly and how to get through that. Right. And as you continue to grow, your confidence goes with that, mm -hmm. right? Now you're going to all of a sudden come across another problem and be like, Psh, I dealt with that at, at house number three. Psh, I solved that problem back at house number five. I can get through this. Mm -hmm. And every time you kind of go through this process, you're going to feel more comfortable. You're always going to find a new problem, but there's always going to be things that you're just going to be able to get through so much easier because you've now been there, done that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Hashi, thank you so much. Um, I look forward to having you back on the show um, to share the next part of your journey. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to all of us. I really appreciate it. And so do our members. Thank you, Becky. For any of our listeners out there, do make sure to hit subscribe, either if you're watching us on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts and not miss another episode of the Lady Landlords podcast. We release new episodes every single Tuesday. Also, if you are interested in having a plan built out for you, feel free to reach out to me at lady-landlords.com. Thanks so much and see you next week. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're feeling stuck in your real estate journey, visit lady-landlords.com to book a one-on-one -on -one workshop with me. I'll help you determine your next best strategy. Or you could subscribe to our newsletter for exclusive tips and offers. Invest with confidence, become a lady landlord today.